Well done. Good evening. This is Julie Bass. She is a mother of six and a criminal. Her crime was growing food in her front yard. You see, Oak Park has an ordinance that requires all ground cover in your front yard to be suitable, and they felt like that food was not suitable ground cover. So she challenged the ordinance in court, and she kind of won, although not the way that really helps. The charges were dropped two weeks before she went to trial. But had she lost, which was likely, she faced 93 days in jail. Anybody think a law like that feels a little wrong? I do, thanks, good call. And I believe that food security outweighs pretty neighborhoods, which is why I'm looking forward to the day when we can strike a better balance in this courtroom. But before that happens, here's what we need to do. We need to know what it is we're balancing and what it weighs on the scale. Here's what I mean. Every law takes away a little bit of freedom, speed limits, zoning ordinances, but they still pass muster as long as there's some rational connection to a legitimate public interest, safety, health, pretty neighborhoods, but other rights get more protection. To restrict one of those rights, that loose connection isn't enough. Now you've got to have a compelling government saving lives, not just pretty neighborhoods. And you can only restrict what's necessary. So what are those fundamental rights? Well, <laughs> love it. Freedom of speech, there it is. Freedom of religion, due process. Basically, these are the things that our founding fathers wrote down 200 years ago. But those aren't the only fundamental rights. See, the great thing about our Constitution is the lines can be read between, and we've been doing that for 200 years. For example, it doesn't expressly say that there's a fundamental right to travel, but the Supreme Court has found one in there. The right to marry also is fundamental. 14 times now they've said so, maybe 15, because marriage is, quote, fundamental to the very existence and survival of the race. Also, the right to educate your children as you see fit. These are rights that basically existed before the Constitution ever wrote them down. So here's my question. What's more fundamental to our existence and survival than securing our own food? Without it, we die, right? And it's not like it doesn't predate the Constitution. We've been doing it since the Neolithic age. What's changed is how we distribute that food. In 1840, 69% of the US workforce were farmers. Today, that number's 2%. Food travels 1,500 miles to get to your plate. Food is more distant now than it has ever been before, and that distance is why we need to recognize a fundamental right to secure food here, just like they have elsewhere. The United Nations recognizes that food is not just fundamental to existence and survival, it's actually a basic human right. In fact, the United Nations says that the human right to adequate food means governments should avoid restrictions that make food any less adequate, accessible, or available. And that's restrictions for any reason, not just pretty neighborhoods. Well, sadly, it's the opposite that's happening. This is a couple in Wisconsin that was prosecuted for giving raw milk to their friends, even though that milk came from their own cow. They sued, arguing a fundamental right to produce their own food. Now, it's difficult to argue for the development of a new fundamental right, and this judge acknowledged that, but read what he wrote anyway. No, plaintiffs do not have a fundamental right to produce and consume the foods of their choice. There was a similar case where the FDA cracked down on the transport of raw milk across state lines, and those U.S. attorneys had this argument to say, there's no absolute right to consume or feed children any particular food. Is this feeling wrong yet? Well, I try to explain this to some of my fellow attorneys, and they kind of chuckle at me, not because they know it's a long shot, which it is, but also because they're just, like, really hippie. You know, <laughs> life, liberty, and the pursuit of backyard chickens. See you in court. But I think they kind of struggle to understand exactly what it is we're balancing, so I'm going to take a cue from Oliver Stone and lay it out real simple here. This is about food on my property. <laughs> food on my property. Food on my property. It's that simple, and yet they still struggle. Now, those attorneys that chuckle, they do kind of have a point. This is a long shot, but there is one sure thing, and that's that no judge is going to acknowledge that the right to grow food on your own property is a fundamental right unless we acknowledge that right for ourselves. Unless we understand what it is when we're told no vegetables in your front yard because it's not suitable or no, not even one chicken in the city limits because that's a farm animal. Unless we understand what it is we're being told we can't do, what that weighs on the scale, and what that balance looks like under the scrutiny that it deserves.
Because growing food of all things on your own property of all places is as fundamental as it gets. Thanks. Ready?